at this point, you're going to start to find a whole lot of women and children brutally murdered. Paintbrush D-Day is one way to describe what's going on at 200,000 subs. Because after nearly five years, I'm going to cut my hair. Instead of looking like a fuckboy, I'll probably look like a neo-Nazi or something. I guess I should buy one of those tiki torches. So anyways, it's 2017, and we're gonna see what this world would be like if the Cold War never ended. Or at least a world where former Soviet territory converted back to communism. I don't really know what's going on here, the Russian Soviet Federation Republic. Is that like some sort of neo-Soviet empire? Well, regardless, they're back, and they even got themselves a new little flag. The rest of the map still has the same leaders, and we're gonna figure out exactly how Donald Trump handles the Cold War. Also, I just noticed this, and no, I did not do this myself. I wonder what these modders are trying to say. Now, there was no way for me to release East Germany, so instead, uh, I'm gonna try to either cause a civil war or something to happen, so Merkel has to watch for that. And I can already tell you right now, China and the Soviets working together is gonna be very hard to stop. That is, of course, assuming that they choose to work together. Hey, but you know what? If Donald Trump doesn't do a good enough job, at least Barack Obama is leading Indonesia. So maybe he can help out. And for anybody worried, yes, the democracies can also declare war on each other. They don't have to go to war with the communists. I just wanted to clarify, yes, I did enable that. Because here's the thing, these democratic governments aren't necessarily going to be working together since they're technically different ideologies. Look at that. Well, there goes the UK. Communism has already made it to the British Isles. I know technically I could have just reformed the Soviet Union by giving back these countries, but I had a feeling this would be a little more interesting if I didn't do that. And here's our first ideological war with Hungary going after Slovenia. Come on, Mexico, it's barely been the first year. You're already being a dick. And now we have Greece versus Bulgaria, which, yeah, it's not gonna work out too well for Bulgaria. I love how Greece just annexed this whole country, but Slovenia was just puppeted. So this might just go ahead and lead to World War III, as it normally does in Millennium Dawn. But at least we got some action in South America, so I'll take it. That's a pretty badass name. Red, Khmer, Cambodia, declaring war on Laos. But there is clearly a lot of infighting between the communist nations. You know, maybe I need to be more careful what I ask for. Uh, this is disgusting. Pakistan is invading Afghanistan, which would give them a new border and they better be careful. A new Warsaw Pact was just created with the European Association of Workers, and this is very bad news for the rest of the world. Now that's a really strange war. I don't think I've seen these guys pop up ever before, and I think that's probably because they are one little island in the Caribbean. We also can't forget the foothold communism has inside of Cuba. Bring those missiles back, and don't be a bitch like your brother. Bangladesh is invading Burma and I don't get how this is happening. Now Greece is gonna take Albania, which, uh, man, they're having a pretty good game. And now here goes the creation of NATO in 2017. And slowly, one by one, all these countries are beginning to join. Or wait a second, France is, that's, that's a different color, isn't it? Okay, yeah, didn't realize that. France formed their own shit, and uh, I didn't even know. They're at war with Spain. Well, okay, nice job. Uh, now there's infighting between the Europeans and most of the other democracies. So Macron here is about to get his ass kicked. So I think the rest of the communist nations should start joining this faction because this new NATO is starting to get pretty powerful. I think one of the more interesting parts of this scenario is how would modern day Islam impact this modern day Cold War? Because technically speaking, they can just form their own faction and do their own thing. And of course, North Korea won over South Korea. Uh, Kim Jong-un had a lot more support this time. I'm assuming. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this what that mouth do guy. He's also communist, but he's leading South Korea, which makes me think he's like a weird evil twin to Kim Jong-un, if Kim Jong-un could have an evil twin. Okay, uh, didn't notice this one. Sweden went back to a monarchy in 2020. They also just declared war on Estonia, which means they might cause World War III. Oh man, Morocco's in kind of a tough situation. This is two separate wars. What the fuck? This is not EU4. So I probably should have anticipated this. It has been four years into this campaign. Ethiopia went communist. So a lot of nations are starting to switch their ideologies. So we were kind of right. The African Union of Allah has formed. Oh, come on, guys. Sweden, this, this is the type of shit we're talking about. This is why people make fun of you. You're doing this to yourself. Mongolia probably should have built their own shitty wall because China's about to take them out. There's also been this weird kind of surge of new factions forming that you know, aren't a part of the main two. Well, it doesn't matter. World War III just started because Greece declared war on Romania. And so it begins, I think, as soon as everyone gets called into this conflict. So at this point, it's the Chinese and the Soviets at war with this new NATO. Oh my God. Okay. 
so... The Zodiac Killer was elected president of the US. All right, communists, just fucking give up at this point. You're gonna start to find a whole lot of women and children brutally murdered. Oh man, the amount of incest porn that's being watched in the White House. Damn, Kevin from The Office really got his shit together. Well, now we definitely know the real JFK files will never be released. Ted Cruz's dad was the second shooter. Anyways, so I guess Brazil is now trying to expand their borders a bit. Incredibly enough, I think they're gonna get even more hideous than they were before. Iran, really? Why, why would you join this? Well, I guess either way, now both the major factions have more minor problems to deal with. Well, there you go, communists. At least you got Czechoslovakia back, even though they're now two separate countries. Okay, what the hell is this? Um, clearly Neo-NATO did something right. Yeah, but I don't know what it was. They just, they got a whole bunch of stuff. So I guess they just defeated Iran, Morocco, and Sweden? Something like that. Ooh, well maybe this will start something because they could really use India right now. Uh, Colombia, I don't think you're made out for this whole war thing. Just go back to selling cocaine. And this is going to lead to some pretty major problems for Russia. Factions are pretty splintered, which is kind of a big problem. Asian coalition, Asian federation. Obviously though, Vietnam did the right thing, so good for them. I think Angela Merkel might have just uh, taken all the communists in her country and sent them on a little trip or something. Nice little train ride, because they're all gone. Wow, okay, America declared war on Samoa. Was that necessary, guys? I think you have enough football players. And in terms of the Greek-Romanian war, or basically World War III, uh, yeah, I think the, the democracies have won. It is basically just the US putting everyone on their back, but um, that seems to be working. They've already capitulated several places on the other side. Okay, how did that happen? Austria went communist? Yeah, I think they just lost a war with Ukraine, but no side joined a faction. And as I've shown before, I think this is the front where the Americans would have the most success. You know, for being a game where I only change the ideology of each nation, this ended up working out surprisingly well. Both NATO and the Warsaw Pact were basically formed, and then Africa and South America stayed pretty much neutral. India, though, was the big one, which I think would eventually go to the Americans. They are conservative. I actually think China, Vietnam, and North Korea would be the hardest to take out. I think Russia would fall probably pretty soon, but the manpower in this region is just way too much. I mean, yeah, as you can see, the Soviets already ran out. They don't have nothing left. I wonder if the communist faction is trying not to allow Ukraine or Poland to join, because then they're really screwed. So as you can see, we are just barely chugging along at this point at five speed, but it's September 2022. And this is what World War III looks like. Um, kind of what I expected for the most part. Well, I mean, except for Poland. That was kind of out of nowhere. They switched to Social Democrats and joined the North American faction. But then it does also kind of have to do with the fact that Communist Ukraine declared war on them. So it was a reasonable move, I think. Here's the big news. India still hasn't picked a side, but I guess they kind of have at the same time. Yeah, they're a bunch of communist sympathizers. The Saudis are one of the only nations kind of doing their own thing. They also took out Yemen or Oman. And now South Africa just joined the Soviets in China, which is pretty surprising since they're social democrats. Kim Jong-un is still not aligned after five years of this campaign. He's also not helping anybody. He doesn't have any volunteers. Wow, okay, maybe he's not that fucking bad. Maybe all he wants to do is somewhat unify Korea and then he becomes kind of a chill guy. Whereas Shinzo, on the other hand, might not be a part of a faction, but he's basically helping every single democracy in this world. And here goes the brilliant AI as this American division sits there with nobody in front of them and the enemy's capital only a few provinces away. Well, nonetheless, I'm sure the USA will take out Russia and it would take probably forever for them to get China. But you did it, Lion Ted. You managed somehow to get us through the Cold War. You know, we also haven't talked about the fact that Donald Trump probably got impeached or was assassinated because Ted arrived before that 2020 election. Luckily for Ethiopia, they should be able to survive for quite some time. It's gonna be difficult for anyone to get over here because South Africa, on the other hand, is a different story. I do want to bring attention to Greece, who I think had like their best Millennium Dawn game ever, even though it's, it's not even that impressive. So anyways, guys, obviously with these Cold War scenarios, we're gonna get ourselves involved in an endless war. I think that's pretty much expected every time. Don't forget 200K for Paintbrush D-Day. It seems like for the most part, people really want to see it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And of course, big thanks to Neo, Wyon, DestinyFucker9000, Jacob W, Elfie, Stormblade, Ethan J, Kirby, Humor Demon, Namir, Stefan M, and Furry Cruz for being my crack daddies. If